Hi, it's Kathy from Bishop Stone Yarns. I'd like to welcome you all here to episode 31 of the Bishop Stone Yarns podcast. If you're a returning viewer, welcome. Um, it's so great to see you again and um, so nice that um, you can spend some time while we have a little crafty chat. If you're a new um, viewer, then welcome. Uh, this is a mainly crafting podcast where I talk mainly about knitting, sewing, spinning and a bit of cross stitch and I guess any other kind of little craft that I might be working on at the time. I'm coming to you from Tasmania which is the little island at the south of Australia and you find me at the moment in the corner of my studio and for those people who are new here or uh, returning viewers who don't know I can just tell you where you can find me around the internet you can find me on Instagram as Bishop Stone Yarns you can find me on Facebook as Bishop Stone Yarns and I also have um, a blog on uh, blogspot or blogger um, as Bishop Stone Yarns um, and I thought what I might do is I might use that as a way to add a little bit of extra um, put some blog posts up on some extra things that I'm not able to pop into the um, into all the episodes on YouTube and um, just in case you know I've got photos and things like that that I want to pop up onto a blog post you can also find those there um, you can also find me on Ravelry as Bishop Stone and that's about it really that's where you can find me <laughs> And um, it is October the 31st, which is Halloween for those people who celebrate Halloween. And um, it has been, well, the weather down here has been very wet and overcast. And uh, we've had some really, really great weather, some really warm and sunny days. And then the rain came and has settled in. And um, poor, I mean, lots of Australia has been getting, especially on the East Coast and uh, the North Tasmania has been getting a lot of rain and there have been a lot of floods. And um, luckily where I am, there aren't any floods. We don't have to worry quite so much about the rain. <laughs> um, we don't get as much rain as um, a lot of other parts of Tasmania or Australia. But still, the weather has still been, yeah, quite overcast and not really all that enjoyable great for the garden but not quite so great for um for us if you want to be outside and doing stuff so yeah well I was just thinking about what have I been up to since the last time I was talking to you and I think I'll just start with some knitting because I have mainly been doing some knitting and even though I have got no finished objects at all to show you this time I have been doing quite a bit of knitting. So I have been working away on my Birkin by Caitlin Hunter and um, I've been working on that for quite a while and so I am on the home stretch with this. Let's see if I can manage to lift this up and show you. I've still got balls attached to it. <laughs> so I have finished the yoke and the body and at the moment I am just working on um, the sleeves. I'm going to try this on again and just see. I think I might be down to where I want to put the cuffs in, the ribbed cuff. Um, and yeah, so here's the back with the short row shaping for the neck and we go so for those people um, who might be new viewers or um, haven't been following this this is from my hand spun yarn and um, so I had over dyed the blue and then the white um, was just left kind of a natural kind of 
white. So um, this of course hasn't been blocked or steamed or anything and so once it's washed and steamed the pattern will show up a little bit more. I, um, what can I say about it? Well I'm really happy with the way the body fits really really well and the arms are great. I think I could have actually gone down a size in the yoke. Um, it's not too big, it's not like, so I mean the neck is fine but the actual yoke bit I feel, yeah I, I kind of, I think I could go down a size. I have spun up enough wool to do a white, one with a white background and then the coloured yoke. So I think when I do that one I'm going to look at um, going down, just going down a size in the in the yoke, um, just to make it slightly more fitted. And I found that when I have it on, um, the where it splits for the arm is a bit lower down. So once this next time, next podcast, while when I'm I've fully finished this. I will put it on and show you. And um, but apart from that, I am really really happy with it. I really like it. I like the design. Um, it's just that I wish that maybe I should have gone down one size for the for the yoke. But um, we'll see. We'll see how it goes when I've finished it and I've put it on. Um, and then if I when I get around to doing the second um, Birkin. I I'll have, I think I'll probably yeah make the yoke just one size smaller. But I am really really happy with how it's going and how quickly it um, knitted up, and I like um, the look of of the body as well and of the blue, and um, yeah I'm quite happy. I'm very happy with the whole the whole project so far. <laughs> So that's what I have been doing. Um, I just thought for those people who may not have seen it before, this is the um, the yarn, my hand spun, and um, the as you can see, I've dyed it blue, and you can still see a bit of the brown that was underneath. So the, it was a this ball of the blue had a lot more of the brown kind of brownie kind of grey kind of fleck to it which is okay I, I was actually hoping that the blue would counterbalance that a little bit more and that there would be it would be a little bit more blue but having said that I'm still very very happy with the colours and how it's turned out and how quickly it has knitted up so <laughs> but of course while I've been knitting um, on this I um, have also started another jumper not for myself this time but I started a jumper um, let me just put that down I started a jumper um, for my husband and um, so this is only the third jumper I have ever knitted him so when we first met many many years ago <laughs> And we were first seeing each other I um, knitted him a jumper and it was um, just a top-down kind of um, Scandinavian style yoke style jumper and um, he's had that all these years and then I think was it last year he had said that um, Oh no, it was maybe it was a bit more than, or maybe it was a few years ago. He had, yeah, a few years ago he had asked for a second jumper, so I had kind of knitted. I'd taken the old jumper because I couldn't find the pattern for it anymore, so I took the old jumper that I'd knitted him and knitted him another one, just using the old jumper um, as a replica and redoing the same yoke and everything on it. But this time I knitted that jumper with a wool that was a, I think a wool alpaca mix and um, so he liked it it was very warm but then it was a little bit hairy a little bit fuzzy and um, he didn't like it as much as the first jumper that I had knitted him so now he'd asked if he could have another jumper so I 
actually went through all my patterns and I do have quite a few patterns and then I realized I actually don't have very many men's jumper patterns at all and nothing that was kind of well the type of jumper that he was kind of looking for he just wanted to be playing kind of jumper so in the end I did find I went out and I found this pattern which was only four dollars so that's okay <laughs> and um, I kind of thought well I quite liked he liked the look of this um, I don't know if you can probably can you see I don't know if you can see on the pattern or not but just um, so it's plain except for just uh, on the sides here of the jumper that it's got a like a rib panel on each side and then um, it's got ribbed sleeves as well so I got the pattern for that and then I went out and got so the wool that I ended up getting um, for him to use was Cleckheat and Country and Naturals 8 ply and this is in color 1812 and it is a mixture of just trying to look to see it's 85% Australian wool and 10% acrylic and 5% viscose which if I was knitting a jumper for myself of course this is not the my, the number one um, go-to wool that I would be choosing but considering it's for my husband and um, I wanted something that was going to be a little bit harder wearing um, a little bit easier to wash and um, whereas with my jumpers I'm quite happy to do and I much prefer 100% wool um, I thought that wasn't going to be the most practical um, for his jumper so <laughs> so I got this one as well so I've got two colors and this color is 2004 and um, what we decided to do because when we went when just went to the local shop who sells wool and um, so it's a local department store I guess you'd say um, and they sell wool there so we just went along there had a look and see what they had and they actually didn't have enough of this one um, in stock to knit the entire jumper with so I said well I could do we could choose the second color and then what I've decided to do with this, with the dark color is I'm going to do the band it's very hard to see on it isn't it so the bands and the collar um, in the darker color and then the body of the jumper is going to be in this one so we'll see how that turns out but so far so good so um, this is uh, how it's going so far got up to here so the pattern itself actually calls for it's a pieced pattern so you're doing your front and you're doing your back and your sleeves and you then you see them all together at the end but I've decided to do this in the round until we get up to the armholes and then of course then I'll just work backwards and forwards for the front and backwards and forwards for the back um, and then knit the sleeves and knit them in so so far so good <laughs> and um, it's really nice this is a really nice um, uh, jumper to knit as well while um, I'm watching TV or when I go out to a knitting group or anything like that um, it, it's because it's pretty I'm not following, following the pattern you know what I mean like it's just very easy um, knitting at the moment so um, and it's growing quite quickly so that's good but I just want to finish the Birkin now just get my get the rib um, on the sleeves finished and the Birkin will be finished then I can just concentrate on on this and um, yes then at least he will have a third jumper <laughs> I don't know how many jumpers I've knitted myself in that time but you know um, anyway yes 
so there we go at least i will be making him something so that is all that i have done in the way of knitting and even though it doesn't look like i've got much to show i have done all of the well almost all the book and and then start the second jumper so all my knitting time has been taken up with those i have found that um especially when i was working on the yoke of the book and i had to pay attention of course to the pattern and um so that was a good thing to do when i was at home by myself or we were just watching something on tv that i didn't have to keep looking up at um we have recently watched a few movies and a few um tv series that i've um been very very thankful that we that i've got this jumper to work on because um i was concentrating so much on the tv that um you know i couldn't have been able to i wouldn't have been able to do anything that had a pattern or um something that i had to concentrate really heavily on so yes that is all the knitting that i have been up to um but that's not all that i've been doing so <laughs> i have been doing a bit of sewing um i'm just wondering where i will start with my sewing um well, I've got a oh um, yes I will start here I I'll just randomly go through what I've been doing so I have been working for those people who are returning viewers you'll know I've been working on um, on this um, pattern for a while the hugs and kisses um, design and this was a really really good project for me to take to my quilting group and I could um, do a bit of hand sewing while I was there and I have actually finished it and believe it or not I had actually ironed this before but now I've just had stuff sitting on it it um, doesn't look like I have ironed it particularly well <laughs> so this is the bag and so these were um, hand pieced um, little in like English paper piecing pieces that I had done for the back and then um, the applique and embroidery for the front and then it has a little a little um handles i think actually in the pattern um the pat i think the pattern actually calls for thicker handles but i only had one piece of material for the handles and so i think um there these se seem to be about half the size of what the what they probably should have been but there was only one piece of the material there so um but i don't mind i'm quite happy with that and i'm happy with the length of the handles because it it fits quite nicely over my shoulder and very nice and very usable i'm actually thinking about whether or not to put like a little button on here just um, to keep it closed because when you have a project in there it is nice to have some sort of a closing something to close it with just to keep it everything nice and safe and it is lined with ooh, I don't know how to show you this lovely tree kind of motif material so yeah I'm really really happy with that I'm really happy that it's finished and um there were no zips involved which makes me really really happy because <laughs> i'm not that great at putting zips in i need to do a bit more practice i think with zips but um yes so that is my new finished bag i don't know which side actually i like better whether i prefer um the embroidery applique side or the kind of um, hand piece side it's the same as oops, okay this is another hugs and kisses 
design so they um this one has little hexagons for the back and then this side just had a, um, a couple of little hearts that you um, hand appliqued on so yeah and I really really like I really like their their um, fabrics I like the designs and I really really enjoy um, doing um, embroidery and applique and I really think I yeah I might kind of get back into doing a little bit more of that kind of work because it really is really nice and relaxing and very enjoyable so at least I have had a very nice finished object there I can get my bag to sit up there and then I what else oh I'll continue on with some of my sewing so some of the sewing I have done is um, I have been working on my farmer's quilt farm yeah farmer's wife sampler quilt <laughs> blocks um, I had actually lost the mojo for that for a little while and um, but then I've kind of got back into it and then so I have finished the star of hope buzzards roost and cups and saucers so these are all using the um, flying geese um, pattern where you'll have to excuse all the threads and everything off it so I did this one first and I thought okay yeah that's okay I kind of you kind of um, put those ones together and they kind of made a lot of sense and that was quite nice and then just I can't remember which order I did them in but so they have done this one which so this one used a um, was flying geese but it was a no waste uh, flying geese uh, so that was um a new and something new for me um but i must admit i i found it um, a little bit tricky in terms of lining everything up making sure that when i cut the pieces like when i joined all the pieces together to make the flying geese kind of pattern um it's a little bit hard to explain but when you put it together and then you have to cut it in half and then you end up with two flying geese things um to make sure that everything was perfectly aligned i found quite tricky which you can see here on this one this one used the same no waste but um where is it if you can see he doesn't line up exactly here on the edges like one a couple of the pieces were slightly larger than um, the other one so it must mean that when I cut it um, it didn't meet exactly so then these points down here don't meet as well as I would have liked um, but like, as I was saying it is a, um, a new technique something that I haven't tried before doing the the no waste flying geese um, but I am slowly, slowly working my way through my stash. I mean, I don't have a lot of, of fabric stash. And I thought, um, because our quilting group, group is making this, um, I thought this would be a good idea, first of all, to get through what I thought was quite a lot of material, but then have now realised, actually, I, I, I guess compared to quilters, real quilters, <laughs> I don't have a fabric stash at all <laughs> what I have is really really small so I'm actually even to the point that I'm wondering if I'm going to actually run out of um, fabric before because there are 111 blocks in the in the quilt and I I'm on what 53 so I've made 53 blocks at the moment so it'll be interesting to see if I actually have enough to get to the end of the quilt or I might just keep going until I run out of material and then um, that'll be that'll be it 
but I am enjoying it once I get started and start and do them I'm really enjoying what I'm doing but um, sometimes just finding the motivation to start is a little bit tricky so um, yes so the other sewing thing I got a little waylaid with um, I came across um, a maker online um, maker and designer called Anne Wood and she had a gorgeous pattern for mice and um, I just I could really could not help myself I had to make one of her little mice so these little white whiskers now her pattern also does have like a big tummy piece a big oval piece here for the tummy and I'm still deciding on whether I will add the tummy piece or what material I would use to um, for the tummy but um, that's one little mouse and of course once I made one mouse I thought I wouldn't mind making another so this is made out of just some white felt that I have and then I came across um, some black felt that I had well he's going to be a little bit harder for, to show you but here is maybe if I show you this one no it's a little bit harder to see on the camera but um, and he hasn't got any whiskers at the moment so I haven't popped his whiskers on so I made two little mice two little black mice and my little white mouse so I just thought they were so cute and so they're all hand hand sewn out of felt so yes I found them very very cute I really like them a lot so I have to find a special little spot for them and I have a funny feeling there might be a few more of these I might end up making a few more of these as I go along because they are so cute and while I was looking at mice patterns I came across um, another lady called Lisa Pay who has a YouTube channel called Pay It Forward and um, she has um, makes absolutely amazing dolls and animals and one of her patterns is for a bunny rabbit and so here is my little rabbit so at the back here I've just got this is the tie that holds the rough ruffle up and I will probably make that a bit shorter I actually had even been thinking about whether I might um, make this into a bit more of like a, whether or not to crochet this into a bit more of a cord um, so it's easier to tie up and untie so that's why I've left it here I haven't quite decided yet whether or not I'm going to make that into a bit of a crocheted um, tie or not so you can take the ruff off off the neck and then she has a little skirt here as well so in this little dress the skirt of course comes off and then there she is just pop her little rough tie away and she has her lovely little arms and i i know there are no eyes or nose on her I haven't decided yet actually if I'm going to put eyes and a nose on her because um, when my children were younger um, my children went to a Rudolf Steiner school and I used to make um, some of the Rudolf Steiner or the Wardorf um, dolls and the dolls there um, when you make the dolls you actually make a formed face soft formed face but you don't add eyes um, or mouths to the dolls because um, part of the philosophy for the Steiner 
is that um, the idea that then children can put their own imagination and their own thoughts into the face. Um, and so I haven't quite decided yet whether my bunny will stay like this in terms of of having been slightly Steiner uh, inspired in terms of not needing a face because she has this beautiful patterned material here or I might just I mean I might just put a nose on her I don't know I haven't I've been sitting having her sitting there next to me for a little bit just so I can kind of have an idea and I thought it will kind of if I suddenly decide oh no she definitely needs a face I'll put one on but um, I really enjoyed making her and um, actually I, I wouldn't mind making another one making a little boy one and making some little overalls or trousers for him and then maybe I was even thinking oh a little knitted jumper and a little outfit would be lovely um, because it is nice to have little outfits for these um, little dolls. So, yes, I seem to have gone down the path of <laughs> of a middle-aged lady making dolls or revisiting. I mean, I did used to make lots and lots of like little knitted dolls and. Um, uh, formed animals and things like that when the kids were younger and I've made um, mermaids and lots of different um, you know sheep and horses and ducks and lambs and um, yeah, dolls as well um, and then a lot of knitted animals um, so I'd actually forgotten how much fun it is to go ahead and make um, make knitted toys because they are just so cute when you're finished with them so I'm thinking I'm going to have to make a special shelf now to put all my my little toys on because I've got my frog and I have started another frog I just haven't put the arms and legs on it so I won't show you that I'll show you that next time when I finish that frog and so I've got a frog I've got my mice I've got my rabbit and um Yes, she is so cute. I really, really like her. So I'll sit her there. And actually, just while I'm on the thought of um, of mice and how cute they are, little cute mice here, I went out the other day to a little village um, near to where I live and uh, went out and met up with my dad and had lunch. And in the village they have a Christmas shop and of course so I thought well I'll have to go in and get myself uh, what I was actually looking for was type of uh, like a Scandinavian type Santa ornament for about this big like um, St Nicholas um, to go along with my Christmas display but once I got in there there are three levels in the shop there are so many things to choose from I could not make up my mind what to get so in the end I came across this beautiful, I can put it up here, is it going to, I don't know if it's going to focus or not, but this beautiful mouse, maybe if I just even hold it back here, so this absolutely gorgeous mouse that has a knitting, uh, a knitting needle, a sewing needle, <laughs> while he's sitting on a spool of thread I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous so this is Tales with Heart um, and it's designed by Paul Lundberg from the US but I just thought this was the cutest the cutest thing even though it's not what I went into the shop for and I still didn't come out with a Santa I will have to go back and look around keep looking for my Santa design but I thought this was just so cute oh my gosh so 
that is just my my little bit of whimsy <laughs> and um, I thought what I'll do is I will put a blog um, post up um, about the Christmas shop that I went to um, with some photos I wasn't allowed to take any video inside the shop but they were happy with for me to take um, some photos so I've got some photos there of that so I might go um, and pop that up on my blog post so if you are interested in Christmas shops and um, all things Christmas then um, pop on over to Bishop Stone Yarns on Blogger and um, yeah I'll have a post up there so um, what else have I been doing? Well, I have, excuse me for a minute, while I just pick up my basket. I have been, oh, <laughs> I have been doing um, a little bit of cross stitch. What I, um, oh, I don't to start. So um, for those who are returning viewers as well, I have been working on my sweet pea from La Di Da. And so I have finished the um, the actual cross stitch part. Maybe if I put this behind, it might be slightly easier to see. So I have finished um, this one. I have changed the colour, so I changed the colour of the heart to red and I have changed the colour just of these little flowers in between. Oh dear. Um, so they, I've ch changed those into one strand of pink, oh where are they, My these little flowers in between. They are one strand of pink and one strand of the red from the heart. Um, just to give it a bit more bit of a deeper color so my next thing to do here is to cut this out and cut out some backing material and um, form this into a standing doll I was going to do that the other day but then I realized I need to get some iron on um, I'm not even quite sure what it's called you know that I <laughs> the stuff you iron on the back to make it a bit stiffer so you end up with a nice um, kind of formed kind of um, soft doll I don't know what it's called iron on something or other but I'm pretty sure I have some but I can't for the life of me find it so um, I might end up having to go and buy some but I still think she's very cute as well so I'm looking forward to making that up and having her finished into a doll can I get her to sit up there no lie her down um, and at the same time I then thought well I have a couple of other things that I do need to finish off for my cross stitches so I had been working on this one the um, sweetheart pocket so I had finished crocheting that but I uh, crochet cross-stitching that but I hadn't actually put it together so here is mine so I have put it together and so you can see I oh, where are we over the side I put my um, initials here and my birth date here as you can see now everyone knows exactly how old I am you can do the maths yourself and even though the camera's not really picking it up it is a very light pink this um, material and I have um, uh, in previous posts where I've talked about this I've I've um, listed the name of the linen um, in the show notes and then I have just had some beautiful this material left over from a hugs and kisses actually quilt that I had made so I lined it with that and then of course there is a little pocket here um, to pop scissors in so I was really happy that I had finished that one sit that one there and then um, while I was looking for things I came across 
in my drawer I had some cross stitches that I had um, done years ago and I am talking years ago um, would have been 25 years ago or something and I then I'd finished them and then just popped them in the um, in the cupboard and I hadn't never really known what to do with them I didn't really want to put them in a picture frame I wasn't sure what to do with them so these um, are Danish designs and they're all stories Hans Christian Andersen stories and um, they came with the kit so they came with the the colors and they came with the material with um, the material and they come with the little stories um, along with it so you have um, this is a story of Claude Hans um, which um, uh, so he, it's a story of a guy I think there's a princess and they're looking for um, someone for her to marry and then all these guys come to town all these princes come um, to see her and um, then he comes in riding on um, on a donkey with this what does he have with him a bird some sort of a bird anyway he comes in and then he um, uh, ends up um, I think does he make her laugh or makes her happy or something because he's just you know I, I'm not quite sure anyway they of course as in all good fairy stories they end up together so that is the story of um, of for this one here so I had just made this one decided to make this one here into a, uh, a pillow and there's just some material here that I had so I just had that as some backing and so there's that one and whoops the other one I had done was the Emperor's New Clothes who I think most people know that story of um, uh, the king who was so vain and um, the um, some uh, cloth makers came to town and told and talked him into believing that they made the most amazing cloth that um, only intelligent smart people would um, would be able to see that material so he could tell from all the people around him who was um, who is intelligent who is smart who is worthy of, of having around him and so um, they go ahead pretend to be making this material and of course there's nothing on the loom at all they're just and the king comes in can't see it he thinks oh my gosh I must be a fool because I can't see this but I don't want to let anyone know because then everyone will think I'm a fool so they go into the whole rigmarole of, of weaving up the material, making him um, beautiful cloaks and clothes out of it and dressing him in it and he heads out to go in a, in, to a parade in town and, um, and trying to pretend that uh, everything's okay. He can see, he sees that he, you know, like he can't see the material but he's not going to let anyone know. Then, of course, everyone in the in the in the crowd is too scared to to say anything and then there's this one little boy um, the innocence of childhood <laughs> one little boy who pipes up but the king's not wearing anything and um, yes so that one was finished as well and I just backed that as well with the same backing and then uh, no. I'm just trying to find where it is there is one other which I um, came across which I haven't even haven't even started so the third one is from the little mermaid so 
I haven't started that one yet. I'm not quite sure why it started the other two and hadn't got around to doing this one. But that would be a, that would be really nice. That'll be a really nice um, kind of little display, little Danish display. So I still have to finish her off. And at the same time, I came across a cross stitch that I had. Um, oh no, I've got one more finished off one. So I had finished this. Where is it? I had done this one started this one which is a shepherd's bush um, it's a busy bees stitching and I had started this when my mum was ill and it was something that I could work on while I was sitting with her and um, especially when she was really unwell and I was just sitting by her bed and um, so it gave me something to do and think about. Um, so I had finished this, and this was another thing that I'd finished. Oh, I well, almost finished. I hadn't, didn't have the writing. I hadn't finished the writing. I hadn't done the bees, and I think some of the flowers I hadn't filled in. But mostly I'd finished most of it and then popped it away in the drawer. Um, so I just got that out and decided to turn that also into a pillow and so all I did was I just used because I had centered this on the material um, and it came as a kit and then I just used just backed it with um, used the same material and I haven't decided yet I have left a little gap where I've sewn this up I've left a little gap down here because I haven't decided yet whether or not I'm going to add say like a little bit of rickrack or a little bit of edging a little bit of lace or something in there and then hand sew sew it on the edges or whether or not to leave it just as it is but it's absolutely gorgeous I'm um, so much so that I am thinking do I get another one of these and I love the linen absolutely love that kind of raw linen look and of course it's got sheep on there so I love the sheep as well so I felt really good I'd finished um, doing all of those and then of course um, for those who've been watching before you know that I have had finished um, doing Kringle and Woolard and then that was another one I had just popped away in the cupboard. And oh, if I just lift it out for the moment. So I had gone and got a, um, oops, a frame to pop in so that it's all ready for Christmas. Oops, there we go. It's all ready for Christmas time. So I felt quite good that I had actually got one two three four five fully finished cross stitch um, things done instead of having them just sitting in the drawer waiting to be done then I while I was going through all these I did come across another cross stitch I had done years ago and this was is probably 25 or 30 years ago and this one had been in a frame and then I had taken it out of a frame and um, then it was just sitting in the cupboard so I, I gave it a good wash and this is also a Danish design um, oh and I can't remember the name of it now but it's um, I think it's quite um, um, if you google Danish or you know cross stitch Denmark it comes up um, as one of the traditional um, ones so there in the middle is Denmark and around the outside are a lot of um, a lot of churches designs national costume um, flowers and things that are kind of you know representing Denmark and for those people who may not have uh, watched all my episodes if you're wondering wow she's got a lot of Danish <laughs> designed Danish in theme things 
I lived in Denmark um, for a year when I was 17 and then turned 18 when I was there. And um, that's where I actually started cross-stitching. I had never done any cross-stitching before and Denmark has a really strong um, uh, kind of history of cross-stitching and there's a lot of cross-stitching patterns and I fell in love with um, uh, the, the cross-stitching designs by um, the designer Eva Rosenstadt and Clara Weaver and um, yeah and so I started cross-stitching and um, so I'm not quite sure I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with this I I would like to make this a wall hanging but what I'm thinking is just not frame it but actually have it as a hung piece maybe with a bit of batting in between um, I mean, I'm not quite sure how to go about it whether I would put um, put a rod at the top and have it hanging on a rod or whether it to put some tabs on it or I don't know if anyone has any any desire any thoughts or ideas that would be lovely because I'm not really quite sure how I'm going to display this but I think I should get it back out and display it again since I did all this work I was looking at the back of it which I'm not going to show you but considering this is a cross stitch that I did very very early on um, I was looking at the back and said oh there are a few threads that I have gone from where there's been one or two stitches and then gone to another spot and I was thinking oh do I go back and, and change those but then I thought no because that's the history isn't it of, of my of me in cross stitching so um, so there it is in all its glory and if anyone is interested oh I don't know how to show you this I lived Oh, up here, somewhere up around here, in in Denmark. <laughs> this little spot way over here. Um, yes. So, I have been tempted to actually get some more of the Danish. Not not so much with Denmark like this, but Denmark has a lot of um, designs that are based around nature. And um, oh, I said I was going to show you the back, and then I just <laughs> did. Um, Denmark, yeah, has a has a tradition of, of a lot of um, nature-based designs, and um, ones of beautiful swallows and birds, and yeah, I don't know, or maybe I'll just stick with what I have. So at least I've finished some cross stitches. I'm about ready to form up the. Um, la di da doll sweet pea I have not started I thought I would start and get finished um, something to do with Halloween but there's always next year I'll wait around to next year to do that um, I've done a fair bit of knitting I've made some dolls had some fun and um, and as you can see from over here this is the wool that was left over Maybe if I move it over this way a bit. Oh, no, wrong way. Um, that I had spun up for my Birkin and was left over from the Birkin. So um, I don't know what happened there, but I'll talk about that next time when I've, uh, next knitting podcast, when I have totally finished the Birkin. And I'll talk about how I got that. How did I get that so wrong for the amount of, of yardage that I needed for the jumper? I don't know. But well, I'll talk about it next time okay well that's what I have been doing I hope you guys have um, had a lovely couple of weeks I hope that you have had some time to enjoy some crafting um, I hope you've enjoyed having a look and see what I've been up to and um, getting a few things finished which is good and um, I look forward to um, seeing you next time if you like the video give it a thumbs up um, if you're not subscribed that would be great if you could subscribe um, and apart from that I think I'll say goodbye and I'll see you next time bye <music>